And I mean, that's just an elite level rider, you know, being able to do to do that. And I mean, he sets that up with such good line choice. And I mean, we saw it lap after lap. I mean, there's a couple of things that he was doing where I was mm -hmm. like, dude, why, why is it that he's the only one that's seeing this line? Like when you yeah. watch it on TV, you could see it where it's like that line selection was so much better than everybody else's. And that's where he was making up his time because the yeah. track's not rough there. What's up, everybody? It's Dave Drakes with The Collective Experience, and we are back for another Foul Plugs Moto Show. And I think you guys are going to recognize this handsome gentleman that I have next to me. It is the one, the only, Rip and Ruts himself, Mr. Jeff Crutcher. What's up, Jeff? Hey, everybody! <laughs> What's going on, dude? Just, um, well, I have some very exciting news. Uh, yeah. I got the word from... Uh, from Cycles on KTM today, and I can start talking about it. Not one, not two, but three 2022 KTM 250Fs with my name on them. Yes. Uh, for the Arena Cross team. So I've got, uh, now I've got two spots that I got to fill. So now it's narrowing down um, between, I mean, fuck, dude, there's so many people that deserve a good ride and, yep. and people that need a good ride. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's it's figuring out who the best fit is. And um, I'm going to say I have a short list of guys, yeah. uh, but the truth is, you know, anything can change between now and and um, I'm going to say mid-September, you know, whenever I'd like to have contracts signed. And so, yeah. I mean, it's that's yeah, I do. I'm all gas, no break right now with that. Yeah, that that's sick. So that's not every day that people can just be like, yeah, I just got this great phone call. I got a bunch of bikes and now I got to find some riders. So that's, right. that's pretty cool, man. It's going to be like a cool feeling to know that the thing that you want to like, you've been putting blood, sweat and tears and it's growing, it's expanding. People are supporting it. That's like, that's got to be freaking awesome, man. It's uh, so far so good. You know, I mean, worst case scenario is I have to pay for the entire thing out of pocket, which yeah. I'm really hoping doesn't happen because, yeah. you know, yeah. I want to be able to salary my riders. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now I've got a lot of hard work on my end that I have to do to, you know, negotiate and then secure the funding to be able to do so. So, yeah. um, but, you know, that I, that's that something about I'm, you. It's that never count you out. And like you always <laughs> you always put people wrong and come out better than you think you are. So I have you know, I, in the world, man. It's funny that you, you say that because I had a buddy, Dylan Cooper, the long mm -hmm. time ago, told me, Jeff, you could fall into a pile of shit and come out smelling like roses. <laughs> and and it's wild because like you know it's one of those things that somebody tells you and you're just like oh okay dylan you know whatever but then yeah. like years later something super shitty happened to me and i realized that i was better off yeah and that's when i thought of him saying that and that's when mm -hmm. i was like oh i get it now <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so. that, that's definitely a, a great trait to have i wish i had uh, a little bit of that jeff crutcher luck so uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the more, the more time we spend together, the more it rubs off on me. Um, absolutely. speaking of good luck, we had an awesome race this past weekend, absolutely phenomenal. And there was a few riders that walked away, uh, with some good lucky finishes. I know no one likes the, the phrase good luck, but these guys, I, I'm going to tell you, if, if, if you get out of that whole shot clean, it's luck, dude, that those guys are all going for it. It is absolutely insane to see the depth of talent and not only the 250 class, but the 450 class as well. Freaking phenomenal racing. Jeff, I want to start with the 250 guys. Just doing a quick recap of race one. We were treated to some awesome racing and we saw the youngster, the Aussie hopeful, pretty much every female's dream. Uh, we saw Jet Lawrence walk away with the W. The dude looked absolutely stellar. He didn't look like he's a young kid out there. He looked like he was a seasoned vet hitting his marks. F fundamentals were on point. He didn't look phased. He didn't let the bot the the pressure and the battles get to him too bad. Um, what is like two things that you noticed from watching the race that you were like, dude, that kid is going to be something? Well, specifically about Jet, one of the things that I notice about him is something that like whenever i'm doing coaching or training something that i really focus on mm -hmm. is gassing one single time i mean that's like so paramount you know i mean at, at that speed or at any you know fast speed is you know having excellent line selection which he does mm -hmm. and also gassing one single time so for example once he gets his braking done and over with he's on the gas but it's not like he doesn't like gas and pivot and then gas out of the corner, you know, power out. Dude, it's one time. Mm 
Mm. And a lot of the times he's gassing before he's even like cornering. Yeah. And I mean, that's just an elite level rider, you know, being able to do to do that. And I mean, he sets that up with such good line choice. And I mean, we saw it lap after lap. I mean, there's a couple of things that he was doing where I was mm. like, dude, why, why is it that he's the only one that's seeing this line? Like when you yeah. watch it on TV, you could see it where it's like, that line selection was so much better than everybody else's. And that's where he was making up his time because the yeah, track's yeah. not rough there. Exactly. The, the, I think one thing that he's really, again, really good at is like, he's got like that feel dude, like that race craft is just so honed in at such a young age. And it reminds me a little bit of Pastrana. And I'd say mostly Stu, dude, man, like the way Stu came out onto the scene and the way he could see the track and see things before anyone else around him could like he was tire tapping quad and stuff before people were like oh wait we can do that like yeah that's a thing you can do it you know okay yeah let's try that you know so like, I, I think jet is almost the same way now of course the the gap from Stu to his competition was like astronomical and now i think that gap is a lot is a lot smaller now um but dude jet is like i think i think hands down the guy really really has like that star quality that's going to make him a legend in the sport and he's just riding so phenomenal um, you know, we can't overshadow the fact that he did split the points, uh, chase right now, uh, with, uh, Jeremy Martin, the guy looked freaking good. And that Yamaha did not expect him to come out swinging that hard. Obviously a lot of people haven't told it as a, as a favorite to win the title, but I kind of expected him to maybe take a, like a moto or two before we'd really see him start to get going. And the guy came out one and then got second right behind Jet Lawrence and, uh, you know, didn't get the overall, but he, he's tied for the red plate. Um, what is what do you think about Jeremy Martin? Is it like pretty much like a, like most people say a Jeremy Martin show, you know, when it comes down to the, to the long stretch of the 12 moto series? Um, or do you think he's going to have his hands full with a lot of people like a jet Lawrence, like a Justin Cooper and so on and so forth? Well, one of the things you have to put into perspective is everybody has their hands full. The, yes. the, the range of talent is so deep. I mean, there's, let's be honest, potentially, 12 to 15 guys that you know are qualified for the top three yeah. maybe not so many that can get the win but i mean just being that speed can prevent you know what we would call like a title favorite from being able to break into that top three and you know mm -hmm. gain more points um as you know specifically about you know martin dude i mean he's a multi-time champion you know and he's been through adversity time and time again and i mean the dude is an absolute like veteran and even of that class what is he 28 years old and yeah and i mean you know i don't think that there should be um points limits i don't think that there should be age limits i understand why you know it works in other places like in you know with the the world championship the mxgp stuff mm -hmm. but specifically in in, in in motocross uh, in America, I kind of disagree with the pointing out system. And the reason that I say that is because there, dude, look at the 450 class. There were 21 factory riders. So in the 450, you know, the final two motos. Yeah. So whenever you're talking about somebody that's on a factory bike is not going to get points. If nobody has a mechanical and everybody rides good, one guy's going to be out of points mm. and he's a factory rider and so because advancing into that 450 class is such a large step and honestly dude i'm 200 pounds and i feel uncomfortable on a 450. yeah so it's like i can only imagine what it's like for smaller guys you know like the martin brothers that are sub 150 and you know like what five six yeah Shit, that's a lot of yeah, dude, that's a lot of motorcycle to ride. Yeah, exactly. You know? I, I I agree with you, man. I I, I just I think it, it's it's a real case by case basis. You throw somebody like a Tomac, keep him on a two fifty for ten years. Yeah, we'll say something. But again, a rider that's short stature that you know seems like they had their hand full with a two fifty. Like, man, I don't know. It 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 could spell disaster. You know. Right, and I mean, in my opinion, the market should decide what you know who who rides what class because yeah. i mean if if yamaha wants a fucking 250 championship dude yeah. let them buy one yeah you know what i'm saying like yep. who cares who cares you know if, if it's like ferrandis seven times over yeah if the dude has the capability to make two and a half million dollars a year yeah 
You know, it's I don't think that it's the AMA or or MX Sports or Felds. Um, I don't think you know that they should prevent somebody from doing so. Yeah. But with that being said, you know, that's that's a whole different topic. But but, you know, my point that I brought that up is like, dude, you know, everybody brings up Jeremy's age. Everybody drink brings up, you know, him being a veteran and Mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. You know, that's just the point that I wanted to make. And like, I I think because of that, he stands psychologically, he stands a really good um, advantage over somebody like Jet, even though Jet is like obviously super talented. Yeah. At the end of the day, you've heard me say it before, experience over youth. 100%. Uh, yeah, we got we got the uh, the merch set up to prove that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's one thing about Jeff Crutcher, guys. If you have not followed along with him, make sure you do. We're going to link his Instagram below. This dude has some of the sickest merch uh content uh just hilarious posts that you've seen uh make sure you follow it you will not be disappointed um so, one writer you know, i have it i haven't really even announced experience over youth i'm still working on it okay okay well we'll, we'll, we'll keep it we'll keep it a little as a little teaser for right now okay and then, and then we'll let we'll, we'll let people uh we'll let people kind of make their inferences i guess <laughs> <laughs> but uh another writer that i wanted to kind of highlight a little bit was uh justin cooper um, and he was my top pick for somebody who was going to come out just blazing, just super fast, nailing off wins. Um, didn't come out with that same sort of fervor, I guess, as we expected. Um, you know, we, he is the the uh, reigning uh, one of the reigning 250 Supercross champs. Um, guys was just so freaking solid during Supercross. Um, and he came out with a third five, three for third overall. And uh, he looked he looked good. He looked solid on the bike, but I don't think we saw that same lights out speed that Jet Lawrence had, or the same lights out speed that Jeremy Martin had. Um, do you think anything should be like read into that a little bit, or do you think it's gonna take him a little bit of time to kind of get ready? We might see a uh, Justin Cooper on top of the podium this next round. Well, two things, um, you know, two things that that I have to say here is number one, plus five hundred points for you for saying fervor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and okay. second yeah and secondly on topic dude uh, again you know cooper's a bad dude yeah it's i mean he's not i mean what is there Tw- there's 12 races 24 motos mm. you know and every single one of them offers points it's there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of window mm-hmm. you know to fit within like at the end of the championship, yeah. it, obviously it happens every year. The cream always rises to the top. Um, you know, that's just, I, I don't know, dude, I'm really bad about speculating on, on, yeah. on what I think, you know, because dude, I've been in those title, you know, in those, in those points chase positions and, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it, it's hard, you know, even from the inside, you know, even formulating a plan it's just like yeah. dude, i don't even want to think about it i just want to go to the next race and try yep. to get more points do my thing yeah yeah no for sure for sure i i, I agree with you I, I think um this is one series where it's just going to be a ton of parody we're going to see a lot of people uh go, you know first third fourth six first second you know everyone's just going to be all over the place just flip flopping positions i mean look at the talent dude we've got justin cooper michael moseman rj hampshire we've got nichols forkner march banks hunter lawrence jiggly swole i mean there's just so many guys in here that are capable of just having a sneaky win or or you know being a thorn in the side of like a points leader um at any given time so yeah. i think this is going to be an absolute lights out um event um and and uh super long series um a few guys that i wanted to um kind of shout out uh you know if the people that most people probably wouldn't uh you know root for out there shout out to rami alves a buddy of mine uh who was just making it happen on the gas gas looking really solid and i don't think gets enough credit for for you know being out there same with jamie and josh for uh dylan schwartz another uh another young gun just trying to make it happen on that lone suzuki uh, trying to trying to uh, you know chase some of the world's best down on uh, and we all, we all know the the allure and the the stuff that comes along with with, with the Suzuki but this guy seems to be, seems to be making it work uh, as well as Jer- Jerry Robin if you guys were longtime followers of the program you know Jerry was uh, one of the first riders that we had on on the, on board for the program and the dude is just super nice um, Crutcher you're 
a little older like myself. I mean, we're young, but you know, also we're, we're experienced. <laughs> I like that. Um, and I think you remember, and I remember when Pro Circuit Kawasaki was just the shit dude. Like there wasn't a title that they didn't win or like, it was very rare for them not to win whatever coast they were on or, or whatever outdoor. Um, and they would go on five, six years of just completely just dominating the 250 class. Now we're seeing that become a little bit different. The last handful of years, man, they're not, they don't have the same prominence and same dominance over the class um, that they once had. And now we're seeing the blue bikes, the Yamaha start really making a push for just swarming that whole team uh, sort of sort of rush on, uh, you know, getting these, getting these titles. And we're not seeing them on the podium as much. Um, you got guys like Austin Forkner, who you know are super solid. Joe Shimoda, who got a win in Supercross, who is extremely, extremely talented, who can who can make it happen. Um, do you think we're going to see that uh, Pro Circuit Kawasaki, uh, I guess, come back to that sort of that that position in the industry where they're winning these every single race, winning these uh, these championships? Are we going to see a Kawasaki be able to keep up with the Hondas and the Yamahas? Like. What, what are your thoughts on that? Because it's a pretty big difference between, you know, where they are now versus where they were just, you know, five, six, seven years ago. Well, historically speaking, um, if we're going to bring up, you know, the, the, the lust, you know, the, or whatever, the illustrious days of, of Pro Circuit Kawasaki, you know, yeah. we're thinking Split Fire and Simple Green. Yeah. Um, we also have to bring up their arch rival. Who was it? Yamaha of Troy. Mm-hmm. And now that the Yamaha too, you know, there is no Yamaha factory team and it's 100% outsourced by contractors, star racing, yeah. uh, and club MX also, you know, um, it, it seems like in the, in the two, in the 250 or previously the 125 class, yeah. it's been pretty much between Kawasaki and Yamaha and, and back and forth. And then obviously, you know, um, uh, Geico had, they had a lot of championships, uh, with the Honda team. I should say factory connection did. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the most part, I mean, like in those heydays, it was either Kawasaki or, or Yamaha. Um, and they were, you know, arch rivals. And so to see that once again, is not surprising to me. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously the manufacturers, for so long, they didn't really put factory bikes in the 250 class. Um, it's expensive and it doesn't mm-hmm. sell motorcycles the way, I mean, four, there are more 450s that are made and sold for the American market than there are 250s. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of that, that's where the marketing dollars go to. I mean, that's, you know, the, the, um, you know, the market drives where the marketing goes mm-hmm. and so for for us to see Honda with um, with a Jet and, and Hunter, and then to see um, Yamaha have like everybody, mm-hmm. you know, on the star team, and then um, Kawasaki, obviously, you know, they Pro Circuit still runs their two fifty operation, um, and then KTM, you know, they've got Max Voland now. Mm-hmm. Uh, gas gas doesn't have a factory team period. Husky is what swole and, um, who's the other kid I'm forgetting. Uh, you got, uh, RJ. RJ. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, they have, they've got two factory riders. Yeah. Um, was it swole that was in third for a while in the first moto? Is that who that was? Uh, no, that was, um, I don't think so. Not Ryder D. God damn it. What's that kid's oh, name? Oh, uh, Styles Robertson. Styles. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you know, that's the thing is like Styles is not the favorite, yeah. you know, of, of those riders. And he was the one that was in the top three for the longest. And yeah, obviously, yeah. RJ made his late race charge. He, you know, pretty typically does. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. A lot of manufacturers are, you know, they're pouring in factory dollars and the 250 class. Those yeah. championships matter. You know, and, and and like we're starting to see now, and I think what it is is the 450s are starting to make themselves. The manufacturers have made the 450s so powerful and so just like over the top easy to ride that mm-hmm. people, the market, uh, are starting to lose interest in them and, yeah. and they want to ride more 250s. And plus, I mean, you know, reliability was always a factor. Mm-hmm. Um, well, now you can, dude, you can run a 250F or, I mean, you can essentially ride it like 
you know, you said Jerry Robin, you can ride the bike like Jerry Robin does for 50 hours and then you, you know, and then just change the top end and you're fine. Yeah. And so because of that, the reliability thing is, it is, you know, people are buying those bikes because they last longer. Yeah. yeah. So the reason I bring all that up is, is, you know, do I see Honda, for example, you know, do they take this as an opportunity to use those marketing dollars, pour it into the race team, you know, because it's a 100% OEM back team. It's mm. not like it's Red Bull Honda anymore. It's just yeah. Honda, yep. you know, and yeah, they're sponsored by their, by HRC and, and, um, HP one, their oil company. Mm. But let me tell you right now, they're not running HP one on those motorcycles. Spoiler alert. <laughs> a, lot of the couple, yeah. a, lot of the, a lot of the teams out there aren't running what you think they're running guys. So that's right. The, you wouldn't believe how many teams are putting that, um, I'm not going to name any names, but they're yeah. putting that logo, you know, big on the shroud or the fork yeah. or, you know, whatever it is. And then yeah. they're calling Maxima and saying, Hey, <laughs> I need some know, of that oil. <laughs> yeah. We need some of that oil. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. But, exactly. but point, exactly. point being, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> dude, it's a toss up, you know, and, and, and like I was saying earlier, it's, uh, the manufacturers, if they want to pour money and buy a championship, now they have, you know, they have the means and the desire to do so. And it yeah. doesn't surprise me, mm -hmm. you know, knowing how the Japanese culture is so much about excellence and, and, and honor and, 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 you know, that like dedicated driven mindset. Yeah. Um, and the Austrians took it and they said, you know what, we're going to do it better. We're going to do it with three brands under one roof. You guys can fight amongst each other, you know, Kawa, Yamaha, Suzuki, and Honda. And it's working. So it's, it's, I love to see it, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, you know, we kind of left Max out of the conversation, but I mean, shit, dude, you know, had he not had that mechanical, could he have won that first moto, his first pro moto? Um, I think he could have, he could have easily done the Robbie Raynard feat yeah. and won his first moto. Dude, and how good did that kid look, man? For like a lot of people count him out. I know I did for Supercross. He was super young. Dude looked solid, man, on on outdoors. I kind of had an inkling that he would be a lot better outdoors and he wouldn't be indoors. I think out, outdoors is just more forgiving. You know, you know, I mean, there's there's not that same high level of risk versus like that big technical aspect of it. Um, but they do just he looked so like seasoned you know what i mean yeah. um I, I was i was very very impressed and it really made me kind of open my eyes i'm like okay maybe they did sign this sign this kid you know knowing full well what he, what he was capable of and knowing his potential um yeah and the guy just looked very very solid so um shout out to all those riders i'm excited to see uh what happens this weekend uh crutcher give me your quick top three rundown of who you think are gonna be at the uh third second and first spot on the podium uh for this upcoming race Let's see, we're racing in Colorado, right? Colorado, sure. We're yeah, at so 450 class, dude. It's going to be hard to bet against Eli. Let's uh, let's let's start 250. We'll do okay, we'll okay. 450 later on. Um, 250. I, I mean, it would be. It, I don't know. It, dude, I genuinely like. I can't. <laughs> I, I can't. Like, I I can't. You know, I yeah, just can't yeah. pick pick three names out of that. Yeah. I mean, obviously Jeremy's fast, mm -hmm. you know, Forkner has some, some unreal talent, but mm -hmm. is he better than Jed and Hunter and, you know, so on down the line, can Max get the moto win? I mean, there, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of, a lot of questions, dude, like it's wild. Like I'm such a super fan that I just like, I just like to not think about it, put my arms you know, cross yeah. like this and yeah. relax and just watch it. Enjoy happen. it. Just enjoy yeah, it. Dude, it's, it's like, I have no, I have no vested interest. I have no, no dog, problem. you know, in the fight. Mm -hmm. I am 100% super fan of just watching. Yeah. But I mean, what, what are you, what's, you know, if you had to pick your top three. Oh man, it's, it's so hard to bet against uh, Jeremy Martin when it comes to Colorado. For some reason, that guy just has it figured out somehow. Um, I like him for the win. I like uh, Cooper um, with the second spot. Um, I think he just looks really, really good. And he had some luck there last year as well. And dude, I just, I can't count out RJ Hampshire, man. I think he's going to have a great second moto. Um, and I think he's going to look solid. Here's the real question. Here's the real question. Mm -hmm. Does Bobby Fitch drop down to the 250 class this weekend or does he stay in the 450 class? And will he qualify and join... I think just John Dowd to qualify after turning 40. 
I don't know oh, if dude. there's anybody else that's done that because he's over 40. I know Dowdy yeah. was over 40 whenever he made his last couple. Oh, yeah. uh, Guy, Guy Cooper was over 40 yep. also. Oh, man. And Dowdy is such a legend, especially for a New England kid who, like, you know, got the J, the John, um, uh, I almost said J Day, the uh, Junkyard Dog, John Dowd lessons on like yeah. 85s and all that other stuff. Dude, nice. the guy's just such a freaking badass um i want to say that he's the only one that can you know do that kind of stuff but right. dude how cool would that be to freaking to see that dude over 40 just like yeah just giving it to all these young dudes out here dude just showing them the fast way on the track like you know what's wild about about fitch is like at local races to train for outdoor nationals and i know that he spends a lot of time doing heavy duty training um, he'll race five classes. He'll race plus 25, plus 30, plus 40, 258, and 458, and like wins every moto. Do you know, on just like an average weekend, the guy races That's 10 contingency, motos. just showered. yeah. Showered. Well, you know, there's a lot of the manufacturers where they're only pay, they will only pay you contingency in three classes, anything over mm. that, and they'll just quit paying you. Yeah, yeah. I do remember, uh, Cowie just was super lax with that rule a yeah. little. Dude, when I was like on 85s and I was just getting smoked by the same kids. I'm like, why are you in this class, dude? Like you already <laughs> want super mini 85A, uh, you know, super mini to all the like let let us slow guys have a race, dude. Like whenever you were growing up, mm -hmm. um, did you race before there were age classes and the 80 classes? Nope. I was uh I was the 85 under, 85 over, the 711s, okay. and yeah, yeah, that was that was kind of my so Whenever I first started racing, and it may have been this way for maybe a year or two, it was still 85 expert and 85 novice. Mm, okay. Yeah, which I think is so cool that you could be a, a, an 85 expert racer. Yeah. Or, but but it was 80 too, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's definitely 80 CC experts out there. Let me tell you, I get smoked <laughs> by a lot of them at the local track, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, what great. about the what about the 450 class? Um, like like I started to say, Eli's. You know. Yeah, you can't bet against Eli, man. He's he's in his backyard. He's in his home court. I mean, right. Number one, the track the track gets rough. The air is mm -hmm. thin, and I, I think he's got a really good setup that for that track. And again, remember his bike hasn't been changing like every other manufacturer. So he's on the right. pretty much the same setup from all three of his you know titles pretty much um and you had a lot of guys who are on new bikes who are on new settings their bikes were completely updated and they're, they're gonna be searching a little bit eli doesn't have to have that issue he might find a few clickers here and there but the dude like all everything points in the direction of eli should have the like i want to say, i don't say easiest time but should have the best setup and the best yeah. resources to be able to go forward and make it this win so it's hard to bet against him um i do see someone like, like a kenny roxon like coming out winning the first moto and doing really good but dude you got to know eli's getting that overall um yeah. and I, I have to say i don't think someone like a ap or ferrandis are really good at altitude i'd say someone like a, a marvin Muskin is going to come out and do really really good here so typically um at elevation guys that have literal less less body yep do well so i think this would be a really good opportunity for barsha to strike yeah you know being not new bike you know ktm it's not like it's not like they don't have a setting going into yeah. you know into colorado and yeah. and i think um this is the kind of track that with a good motorcycle he could you know really uh really do well on because yeah. of the ruts and yep it's uh yeah i'd love to, oh, man i, I want to see that gas gas get a win i just i want to yeah. see it so bad me too man that, that bike just looks like i haven't got this excited about a like a, a bike that looks that good since like remember like the moto the moto triple x suzuki's like the yellow with the green seats <laughs> yeah. like, that uh, was ecc oh sorry sorry ecc's yep sorry 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 moto triple x was a honda's with the blue yeah okay uh ecc i think shorty was on that team right or is that moto uh World? uh shorty um not danny smith because he was on motor world danny smith yeah, was motor yeah. World. um 
And they were, they were no, bad. short. No, no, no. Short was on Moto World. Moto World. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But whoever was on the team ECC bikes, those things, like <laughs> seeing those in person, like little kid, like looking over the fence, you know, like, holy crap, does that bike stand out? Or like Pastrana's Suzuki with the gold rims and like the RG3, like triple clamp setup and four, like, dude, like. That was just those bikes made me like, wow, like this sport is so cool. And I got that <laughs> same feeling when I saw Barsha's bike roll by in the pits. And I'm like, wow, like, you know, like the 12 year old of me was just like so excited, man. Um, so that was like that. That's pretty cool. I would love to see that um, before we get into some 450 uh, breakdowns on what we saw, and what we're going to, you know, what we uh, want to get into. Um, Jeff, you got something really cool coming out right now that I think everyone's in a mad scramble to become a part of. You're doing a pretty badass giveaway of not only a motorcycle not only gear not only stand but a whole freaking moto van dude like you're pretty much giving everyone their dream setup in a giveaway give me the rundown of that dude how did how is it going how did you come up with it and like what what gave you the compulsion to give away all of your stuff to some lucky winner dude well it was it, you know it was a combination of a couple of different things i mean number one what would be more exciting than to get somebody that you know doesn't necessarily have good equipment or doesn't necessarily have like the best vehicle mm -hmm. to get them in a, a van that i would drive from florida to washington tomorrow um it, it, and with a bike that i mean can be ridden for another 70 hours before you even have to really maintain it um so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to put this package together and, you know, I've been tossing around the idea of selling the van and, you know, like I said, I don't, I'm not comfortable on four fifties anymore. And I, I've got the 252 stroke and then the, the, the 250 Fs, I'm just going to stick with those bikes. So I was like, dude, why not, you know, why not, um, give this shit away for practically nothing. I mean, you know, is it, it I kind of got caught between a rock and a hard place because I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to do a raffle like everybody else, you know, dude, it's huge here in the Midwest raffles are gigantic. Like yeah. everybody raffles their motorcycles away. Nobody sells their bikes anymore. Yeah. And yeah. so like, dude, people, you know, they get, they get motorcycles for 75 or a hundred dollars. It happens yeah. all the time. And, and like, it, you know, crowdsourcing is, is a proven, you know, it's a proven winner. People, yeah. it works for a lot of people. And so I was like, I'm going to do a raffle. And then um, a buddy of mine uh, messaged me and said something. He's like, hey, dude, you know, it's not exactly legal. And then I was like, really? What? And then I started doing some research and I was like, oh, yeah, no, this is a felony offense. Like I could go to jail for a long time yeah. over this, you know, if I had a you know, a prosecuting attorney that was a really upset, you know, mm. over this type of deal. And like to do just a, to do just a motorcycle is one thing, but to include all the extra, you know, accoutrements and the van, do I think that, that might draw some more attention than I necessarily, you know, wanted on, yeah. on this program. Yeah. And so, um, I was like, well, how do I do this? How do I go about, how do I not give, you know, all these people, their money back. Mm -hmm. How do I keep this thing going forward? And I, I realized I was like, well, it's totally legal to be sponsored, you know, by, um, you know, people and for somebody to buy something, yeah. um, in, in trade for hopefully getting a, a, a thing, but to just do it, you know, everybody, see, here's the thing. It's like, it cannot be a game of chance. That's yeah. what defines, you know, or, or makes it gambling to where, you know, it, it falls under the jurisdiction of the, of the gaming commission. And honestly, they don't play games. Mm. And with there being so many um, Indian tribes here and a couple Indian casinos, I'm sure that they watch for this kind of stuff all the time, mm. you know, because they don't want people not going to the reservations and spending money at their casinos. Yeah. And that's what this is. I mean, let's be honest. A, a raffle is a form of gambling. Gambling. Yep. Yeah. And so I, I was like, dude, I got to get creative with this. So I got to think about it. I'm like, well, I'm getting ready. You know, I'm gearing up to go racing. Um, how can I tie this in? And I was like, well, why not just offer it to my sponsors? Yeah. yeah. And there's no, there's no barrier to entry for becoming a sponsor. Exactly. I mean, you know, as far as like quality control goes, it's you got a hundred bucks. Sure, dude, you're my sponsor. 
Yeah. You know, and, and, and we've talked about the difference between a sponsor and, um, and a partner. They're, they're very different. Yeah, and yeah. so, yeah, no, I've, I've actually never taken on sponsors, you know, with the team, we've taken mm -hmm. on partners, yeah. you know, whether they're product or, or, or partners in, uh, you know, investment partners, but, um, yes. And this is a new deal. And so, um, now with a hundred dollars, here's what you're guaranteed. You're going to get a sticker sheet. You're going to get an autograph poster by everybody that, that rides for me. Once I figure out who it is, that's going to ride for me. Like I said yeah. earlier, yeah. um, you're going to be added to the email list and you're going to get the, uh, race recaps, um, pre-race, you know, pre-season stuff, you know, Which are really good. Your newsletters <laughs> that you send out, like really good. If, if you're so lucky to be added to that list, take note, cause that that's how a race recap should be, should be, uh, right. should be executed. So there's, you know, and obviously like you, you got to participate by being a partner with the team yeah. in a lot of the black book activity that, you know, I like to do mm -hmm. that's reserved, you know, that's, it's not the same thing as, as these race reports and yeah, weekend yeah, recaps. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, you know, we're going to notify people of whenever new content is released on, um, IGTV and, uh, YouTube, which it'll, mm -hmm. it'll be, you know, cross platform. It'll be the same content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your name will be in the rolling credits at the end of every uh, YouTube and Instagram TV vlog. That is awesome. So that's what you get, you know, for being a hundred dollar sponsor. Okay. You yeah. pledge a hundred bucks to the team. That's what you get. Okay. There's, there's a lot going on there. Yes. Then because you have become a sponsor of the team, mm -hmm. I'm giving out 200, um, 200 blocks, so to speak of, uh, of opportunity to win all the stuff that I have. And, and so, yeah, it's a 2019 KTM 450 SXF with 33 hours on it. The bike is mint. Mm -hmm. I've got a, um, a 2000, I think eight, honestly, I don't even know what year it is. <laughs> I've got it. I think it's an 08, uh, Chevy, uh, 3,500, um, uh, moto van that was at one time Sensorillo's van him and his dad they're the ones that built it originally they're the ones that put the partition in and carpeted and the dvd player um and and uh benny bloss bought it from him okay. and then uh now i have it so i i think this is a legacy moto van and you know hopefully the next person and hopefully it just stays in motocross forever yeah yeah, it gets yeah to right? be, you know a part of that um, there is some hidden memorabilia inside of the van uh, that originally was Adams and okay. Benny's also, and uh, it, and hopefully I'll, I'll put something in there too, and then I put a couple of my friends' stickers and stuff, and hopefully it just kind of lives on forever. Keeps going, you know, yep. Yeah, in the realm. Uh, but dude, like I said, I mean this thing it's got it's got brand new tires, brand new brakes, brand new. Um, uh, what is it? The, uh, uh, the sway bar components and the steering. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. It was just yeah. that I had to replace that Benny didn't. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just did a full transmission flush on it before I went, uh, to, uh, bar to bar right before I got hurt. Mm -hmm. Dude. So, I mean, this thing is literally ready to go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it needs nothing. It has a, um, a sleeper in it. So it's, it's got a six inch memory phone mattress on a bunk. So there's yeah. storage underneath plus, you know, the comfort of, uh, of being able to just pull over and take a nap. Um, plus it can fit two bikes and all the shit that you need. And it's got the towing hitch and I mean, do the thing. Oh, I put HD loads lights on the front of it. So they're like asshole bright, but Hey, it's about me, not about anybody else that's on the run. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's it. okay. So there's the van. Yeah, so how does this work? All right. So once I get 80 entries, mm -hmm. the clock starts ticking. Right. Mm -hmm. And dude, I mean, we're, we're close to 80 entries. Yeah. Um, or I should say 80 sponsors. Then from, from the 80th, um, from the 80th sponsor pledge, we've got 30 days mm -hmm. until, you know, whatever rolls in, in that window, you know, I'm going to keep pumping it up and I'm going to keep going and, yeah. and hopefully we can get more people on board. Um, but I mean, it's, it, it, if, if we're between 80 and 140 entries, mm -hmm. it's motorcycle only. Once we get over 140 entries, the van's included. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like, I want, I do I want somebody to get this package. Okay. So, um, additionally, if you, if you buy, uh, two or more, if you buy two or more sponsorship blocks, dude, you're entered to win a set of race worn team autographed gear from me or one of the riders, which, you know, whichever ends up being, 
Um, and uh, you also get a um, pant, jersey, and glove combo from Fox Racing in your size. Solid. Okay. And then so um, let me keep going here because it's it's worth uh, talking about. Well, I've got you here. Sorry. Yeah. I Dude, you had my bike pretty much. So I'm, after the, after we do this, I'm definitely sending you some money. Uh, <laughs> I want to get entered in this thing big time. Um, that's so cool, man. Think about if like the, the, the guy or the kid or the family out there who's like, man, I need a bike or my bike just blew up or, you know, I can't afford to get that nice new, the nice new KTM and, you know, hundred bucks becoming a sponsor. Not only are you entered, uh, you know, um, to, to be able to do this awesome, awesome opportunity to win something, but dude, you're like a solid sponsor contributing to this great, uh, racing team, man. And like, and that's what the collective experience is what we're all about, man. Right. We're, we're all about giving back to the sport, giving back to the people who make the sport great, the privateers, the teams, the fans. And, uh, how freaking awesome is that dude? So you do all that and then you can literally transform your program with a moto van, all these like extra that. fixings. Number, no, I didn't even know it was ACs. That alone, <laughs> that alone, dude. It's right. freaking killer, right? Who was an AC fan? Like, yeah. This is also, I sh I should mention that um, you know I personally am giving away from the pool of people that are um, you know uh, becoming sponsors. I'm giving away five custom bike sticker sets. So sick. So yeah, I've got more. I've got more of my uh, product sponsors that are going to be contributing stuff. So it's going to be one of those things where you got to check in daily and yeah, like, yeah. It, okay, if you bought in on the first day of of this program being open, you're vested in. So whatever's whatever becomes available, regardless of when it becomes available, you're in. You're in for yeah. you know for the winning. So it's not That's like awesome. oh, I got to get in now, but. All right, dude. Yeah. So tier one bronze, hundred dollars sponsorship. You know, you get the sticker pack, the poster, entered to win the van, which also includes or or say the bike and Chevy van giveaway. If we get to the point to where, you know, we get the van, um, or no, 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 no. Shit, this comes with the bike. Sorry. Matrix toolbox, matrix tie straps, and a brand new UFO folding stand. Ooh. Just with the bike. Ooh. And then, you know, then the van, you know, comes in whenever we get there. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, one in, one entry into product pri uh, product giveaway prizes. So so it's I, I just want to make it very clear. $100 gets you the opportunity to win product. $100 gets you the opportunity to win the van. $100 gets you the opportunity to win um, the bike with all the all the accessories. Yep. And the $100 gets you um, the sticker pack autograph poster and, uh, you know, in the rolling credits, that's all the same $100. Yeah. Okay. That hundred dollars is going a long way. Uh, so, uh, tier two silver sponsorship, you know, it's everything above plus race worn Fox gear. That's autographed plus a new pant Jersey and set of gloves in your size. And you still are opportune for, um, you know, the, t uh, team race bike and Chevy van giveaway. We go tier three, gold, gold level. All right. So now we're now we're stepping it up. And this is where the team really comes in. Uh -huh. All right. So it's tier one plus two plus four VIP credentials to the Hoosier Arena Cross National Weekend of your choice. 14 t-shirts, one entry to win an autographed race worn Fox V3 RS helmet. So you're gonna get one of the racers' Ooh. helmets to put on the mantle. Yeah. Um, and then you become a presenting sponsor of all the team vlogs. So for example, like at the beginning, all right, let's say that the collective experience wanted to buy into this, it would be the collective experience presents and then, you know, the making of a race team or whatever it ends up. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what the title of it's going to be. All right. I absolutely love this. You know, I, I want to, I want to spice this up. I want to yeah. throw in a, uh, um, uh, MX or sorry, AX now, uh, arena cross internship, uh, into this as well. If you'll, if you'll, uh, if you'll accept it, I want to, yeah. I want to be, I want to be part of this and be able to give something really, really cool. Right. Um, because dude, I'm, I'm freaking amped, dude. I'm like sweating. <laughs> I'm like, I got to, I got to Venmo this dude. Uh, yeah, dude, why don't we do that? We're going to, we are also give away, uh, you know, one of our experiences with Jeff Crutcher and the team, um, and you know, be one step closer towards getting your career kicked off in the industry, man. Like, what, what, Excellent, dude. All right, we'll put that plan in. We'll oh, put that plan in. So let me. Do you, all right, so we we still have. Are you ready for this? Two more yeah. tiers to go. All right, so tier Ooh. four, platinum level sponsorship. All right, this uh -huh. now this goes for a thousand dollars. All right, but mind you, you're now getting ten chances to win the bike and van. 
Yeah. Okay. So for every hundred dollars that you spend mm -hmm. on sponsorship gives you another entry block and that's capped at 200. So an individual such as yourself, Dave, mm -hmm. you can buy as many sponsorship blocks as you wish. Like there's no cap. You can, I mean, you can buy out the whole program if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's limited at 200 and, uh, there's uh 200 total, but an individual can buy as many as you want. All right. Mm -hmm. Tier four thousand dollar sponsorship, your name and logo printed on all team merchandise and on all team motorcycles. We will work together to strategize an effortless program that ensures satisfactory execution of placement and representation. So that ensures that you are happy with what it is that we're doing with your branding, your image, your logo. Now we call this a level one activation scale. Um, and honestly, this is a, this is something we need to talk about on the phone. If somebody's interested in becoming a sponsor of the team, you know, and, and wants to get in on this platinum level, um, I ask you to give me a call yep. and, and, and we'll go over a lot of the nuance and the details from there. How, what a great um, opportunity for a company. I, th so one thing that I, <laughs> again, I love about your team is anyone that invests in anything that you do, your program, uh, your race team, it is absolutely like such an ROI positive deal. Like it is insane just how, how much you get back from this you know what i mean it, it's it's yeah. crazy like all the sponsors um that, that were with you for this arena cross uh past arena cross series i didn't see a single one of them that like was like oh yeah this is pretty cool all of them were like this is phenomenal like we got so <laughs> much back the attention the uh you know we had so much fun the other companies we were partnering with i know I, I was i was stoked on it um it was it was it's super great for any brand so this is almost a no-brainer for any company out there that wants to hop on board and be part of something that's so beneficial and so cool so obviously the tier four platinum thousand dollar sponsorship that's tier one two and three combined plus this okay so that's it, it levels up and continues adding on that's all right it. here we go now this is now this is the big boy this is the one that you know um really means a lot here okay tier five the diamond level five thousand dollar partner benefits notice that i do not say sponsor because at this level yep. you're spending five thousand dollars on the team you have become a partner and investor in the team not just a sponsor all right so you get tier one two three and four plus the following you become an associated partner into the race team you're included into the team black book network which i talked about earlier that you've yep. seen yourself dave it's a closed door group to the top industry personnel that operate as the business to business leadership machine this collective group has proven to be an roi powerhouse now yes. i didn't just say that because of what you what you just said That's yeah it's actual kind of fact. factual stuff guys. i'm not <laughs> i'm not kidding any company it, this would be a, almost a no-brainer yeah um additionally all the team helmets so what we're you know what we race in if we can sell this level all team helmets wrapped with your branding you'll receive a race worn autograph by all team personnel helmet now we're starting here what's called the lab the level two activation scale again we got to talk about this on the phone you know for more information to get dive into the nuance what the program benefits are what kind of um don't like how do I say this? What it is that you're going to get in return for $5,000 may not necessarily just be, Hey, we're selling product. Yeah. It may be brand recognition. It may be logo placement. It may be an activated event where we go and we represent your brand, um, at your company. You know, it's like, let's say that you work at the Harley Davidson offices and you want, us to come and bring our bikes and be on team Harley or, you know, whatever the yeah. thing, I know that's kind of silly because you guys make motorcycles, but point being, yeah. that's the kind of stuff that unlocks, you know, this level two activation. Um, and again, so now you're talking about 50 entries into the opportunity to get, uh, you know, to have your, have your name drawn for, uh, the motorcycle and van. So, um, you know, then above that we do, there is another, um, level, but I'm going to be honest with you. It's not a, it's not a price that I'm really advertising. Um, that's more or less confidential information that, you know, what, what it is to be title sponsorship, yeah. but yeah, like, a, like a, a diamond level sponsor, you know, I'm, I, we may be able to take on three of those in a year. Mm -hmm. um and ensure that everybody gets you know good quality return off of it and fair mm -hmm. treatment and ins and ensures also that there's no um you know how do i say um you know overlap so to speak mm -hmm. where where you know we have bob cycle shop and cycle zone you know it's 
yeah so it's it, you just no conflict of interest is what yeah I'm yeah no that that's awesome honestly this this is this is super cool um i love to see innovative ideas like this great opportunities like this can like, you hold on cool. one second just yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah no worries no worries no worries um yeah guys if if you have any interest in in doing anything cool like this like um you know wanting to be a sponsor wanting to be part of jeff crutcher and his team's just efforts this is such a cool way to get in as well as get yourself set up with like again your whole program uh a bike gear van opportunities to to be you know featured on on his team that is so beneficial and i think it's such a cool like cool way to cool way that, that jeff crutcher is giving back so you, you can see why we like him so much right this, <laughs> this is awesome um yeah if, if you have any questions we're going to link uh that below as well the uh the url that you want us to go to uh crutcher to get them get them set up um and uh, i hope that a lot of people you know rush to do this because it's, it's it's such a cool opportunity um speaking of cool opportunity We've got uh, the 450s, which are hitting the track, like we talked about a little earlier. We get to see some great battles. Um, we saw Kenny um, have a really, really good ride last weekend after a not so stellar Supercross, uh, I want to say last five or so races, um, but still managed to, to have a pretty good season. You know, I think he uh, he turned things around a little bit, and uh, I think he surprised a lot of people with how just how great he can be. Um, but he got some redemption outdoors. Uh, what did you like seeing about Kenny in the 450s, Crutcher? Like, what did you think? Anything that Kenny does, I'm a fan of. Same, um, same. Yeah. So, same. Um, you know, really not to not to shift gears on you, but when I think yeah. of the 450 class, dude, straight up AP, I'm a huge Plessinger fan. Yes. And so I'm like, you know, I just want to see that guy do good. He truly, yeah. you know, I listened to his podcast with Gypsy Tales, and I yeah. was just like, this guy's like my neighbor, you know, I mean, he doesn't take himself seriously <laughs> yep. at yep. all. Yep. And like, he's got a pretty cool story of, you know, how he got into motocross, you know, cause obviously, you know, his dad being a bad dude in the woods, you know, and Aaron took after that and then, and then translated it over to motocross just cause, you know, because they're like, let's give it a shot. You know, yep. who knows, we can try this and maybe it'll work out. And so now to see someone going from, Hey, let's give this a good old boy, you know, challenge. And, yeah. and then it, now it turns into potentially being able to win races in the 450 class. Yeah. It's, it's phenomenal to see like the, the 180, the transition that he's done lately of like, you know, he got on the 450 Yamaha with, I um, mean, the factory effort, not so stellar, but now that it's a star racing outfit, it's almost like he, like, it's a new rider. It's a new uh breathe, breathe uh new life into him and i think he touched upon that in the gypsy tales um podcast was just like how how different the bike uh handles and operates and how much better he feels uh you know they, they take his feedback a lot better and I, I think it's it's reflecting in his riding now he's almost like the people's champ and i will say uh we just did a, a moto school with him not too long ago in georgia and dude like ap is such a relaxed cool funny dude like doesn't matter who you are um he'll treat you just the same as everybody else like a buddy and uh he, he's so open so relaxed so nice so cool um definitely a definitely a good dude to be around and it, it makes watching him and cheering for him just that much sweeter when you get to see like the personality and and just understand how cool he is um we saw his teammate ferrandis look really goddamn good yeah. <laughs> 450. uh yeah. i'm a big ferrandis fan man since the day he came to, to the to the states and started racing dude the things that he does in the bike man the way he rides is just so so dope and he he's potent man he he looks really really good um is it too early to say that ferrandis could be the the guy that like pulls that cooper webb 2019 supercross title out of nowhere like um you know could he, could he do that with the motocross title could he you know be the guy that's holding the 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 cup at the end of the series like he he looked really solid well first thing is how do you bet against the guy that wears this hat like this <laughs> right you know and, you know that reminds me of like you know like the like late 80s 90s cycling caps that everyone yeah. wore. my dad my dad is an avid cyclist like tony drakes is like the cyclist cyclist and <laughs> dude still wears those to this day the tiny tight little flipped up like that's him so that every time i see that dude i'm like ah oh, brings me back to the 90s <laughs> yeah he's uh he's a good character and obviously yeah. 
just like Aaron, a very happy individual and loves. Yeah. I mean, you can see guys who are like, they're so thankful for their opportunity, you yes. know, that they, yes. that they get to do what it is that they do. And, yes. you know, they, they relish in that and it's hard to root against somebody like that. Exactly. I, I'm really excited to see what he what he does. Um, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm excited to see Marv uh, do some really, really cool stuff in the KTM too. I, I There's a lot of controversy around the neck brace versus no neck brace. And some people are attributing the no neck brace deal to him kind of doing a little bit better. Um, I, I don't I don't know how much weight to put into that. Well, we actually did a video on uh, neck brace versus no neck brace, getting some of the pros to weigh in on it. So uh, be sure to check that out. Um, we did a couple weeks ago. Uh, it was pretty interesting to see some what some pros had to say about it, and some of the comments we got on that one. Oh boy, I was like, I didn't mean to start this kind of conversation, guys. Like, holy crap! Like, you know what I mean? People are like at each other's throats about it. So uh, I thought it, I thought it was pretty interesting. But what, for whatever reason, he looks he looks a lot better on the bike, um, and uh, I'm excited to see what what he does. Obviously, you not talked about Eli. How could he not do good? But he got you know ninth last weekend overall. Eh, not looking as solid, but I mean, it's still early in the season. He can bounce back. Yeah. I mean, the, the guy knows what he's doing. Would you agree, Crutcher? Yes. I mean, simply put. Yeah. yeah. You know, yep. it, it's not hard to bet against Eli because he does have a tendency to, um, you know, beat himself. Mm. Uh, or he's done it more probably than anyone else. Mm. Um, so because of that, yeah, he's a little bit of a wild card, but coming into this weekend, specifically Colorado, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, for me to bet against that. Exactly. I, I have to agree with you. Um, also looking at AC, uh, leading, leading the charge for a little while in the moto man and, and made that small mistake, which is, uh, I hate to say it, but kind of typical AC to get out <laughs> there and, and kind of throw it away a little bit. But I mean, I'm a huge AC fan and I think, it, uh, it makes him more hungry every time he does that you you gotta know the guy goes back to boot camp on himself and it's just training non-stop to come back b better stronger faster and i'm so excited to see what this guy does throughout the season you, i i feel it in my bones we have a win coming from this kid outdoors like he just looks so good on that bike and uh how could you deny the the talent that is the baby jesus of motocross adam cincerillo um dude just he, he looks good man looks solid well, I got to root for him because obviously I own his old van. Yeah, right. So there's that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, there's also the Fox connection. So, again, yeah. you know, an AC fan. Um, dude, he's, he's such a good guy and such a fan of the sport as a whole, mm -hmm. not just, you know, he goes beyond what I, you know, what I was saying about AP and, and, um, uh, I keep the frog, dude. God damn it. Fucking, who were we just talking about? The guy at number 14 on the Yamaha. Why can't I? Ferrandis. Uh, Ferrandis, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, dude, the thing about, um, you know, him is that, like, he's such a fan of the sport, you know, and mm. truly carries, you know, his team on, the, on his back, even yeah. though he's not the lead rider. And, um, you know, enjoys every opportunity that he gets to, to race his motorcycle and, um, you know, just being around him at, at, at Fox Raceway last year, um, after the races were over, he came up to the Fox rig and hung out for, fuck dude, it would have been two or three hours. And, um, I actually, he had a few. <laughs> along with a few other people and um i don't i you know i don't drink and so i'm pretty much designated dumbass at all times yeah and so for that um i got to uh i don't remember what logistically it was easiest if me and uh hoover took adam home in adam's i don't know how it worked out i i ended up driving adam's truck back to his house mm -hmm. And then um, Adam, or I'm sorry, George, uh, fucking, uh, dude, I'm just about blown on the names right now. Hoover followed me in the Fox truck, or I followed them. Anyway, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, just fucking hanging out with the guy, just 10 out of 10, dude, you know? Yeah, yep. I like him. <laughs> I have to say, he's one of the only top 
top 10 guys that actually follows me on Instagram. So I, I got I to gotta show them love, man. You're talking about, dude, I follow you on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're right. I, I slipped my mind, man. It slipped my mind, my bad. Which top 10 are we talking? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love you, Croucher. Uh, yeah, and you know, another shout out. We got to talk to talk about guys like Cooper Webb. Um, looked looked solid, but I think he's still kind of in that like supercross mode. It'll be a little bit a little bit before I think he transitions over and starts making a big push towards the front like the rest of the guys. Sexton looked phenomenal. Always love seeing that. Um, got to give a shout out to Cody Shock. The dude got 15th overall. Looked absolutely solid in the 450. Usually we're used to seeing the FXR Chaparral rider uh, under Michael Lindsay's outfit, of course. Shout out to Michael Lindsay. Um, usually see him and, at the front of the 250 class. And it looks like he can get the job done in 450s also. Because the guys that are around him, like, you know, he had Joey Savacci, Max Ancy just ahead of him, and Alessandro Lupino behind him, the uh, the GP star uh, from Italy. Like, the guys around some really good company. So hats off to him. Uh, we also got to give a shout out to our buddies, Alex Ray, Jeremy Smith, and Justin Rodbell, the SGB racing team making it happen, as well as a shout out to Nick Smith and the All South team. A um, lot of lot of talent. We're, we're rich with talent in this uh, 450 class, and I'm so excited to see what shakes up uh, once we drop the gate this weekend in Thunder Valley. Um, guys, don't forget that we have our MX internship and vlogger uh, experience program. Um that's set to launch uh, at every single one of these races. You get a chance to go behind the scenes. Crutcher is very familiar with the mechanic side of it. Uh, you get to go behind the scenes, behind the velvet rope and immerse yourself with a pro team, helping them with all things like social media, helping them, you know, wrenching, helping them with uh, program management, whatever it is uh, that they need. You're getting a chance to experience it all and have an absolute blast with it. And uh, not only that, but you get so many uh, swag items and so many promo codes. Plus you get the connections that you need to make a push of the sport to have a humongously successful career. Uh, now we we're, we're limited for each spot. Um, so please be sure to covet these, uh, these opportunities just the same way that, uh, that Crutcher is coveting his sweet little cat right there. Um, <laughs> and make sure you sign up. The link is below, um, spots are, 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 uh, are just dwindling super quickly. Um, and of course the proceeds that we raise go right back to the teams like Crutcher's team, like SGB racing, like Henry Miller, and the list goes on and on. Um, and we want to make sure that we get as many passionate fans behind the sport and working in this industry, making it that much better. Um, guys, this was super fun. Crutcher, this was awesome. Guys, make sure you please uh, sign up for what Crutcher has going on. Anything that he has going on. I don't care if it's a new merch drop. I don't care if it's a race team. Whatever it is, just DM the guy and say, hey, uh, I promise you, uh, one of the best people in the industry. I love him like a brother. Does amazing things. And please make sure that you, uh, you enter his uh, giveaway slash sponsorship opportunity where you can literally transform your moto career. I can't believe how many things you have. It's, it's freaking phenomenal. Um, guys also make sure that you hit the subscribe button. If you enjoyed this, share it with your buddies, talk about how awesome and how good looking we are, how charming. We really much yes. appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, make sure you continue to keep supporting the channel. Thank you so much for the people that uh, make this little community of ours happen. And we are so grateful for you. Uh, Crutcher's coming back. Um, and we should have uh, our regulars, Taylor and Manny Fresh on as well. But honestly, Crutcher's better. So we're, we're going to keep, uh, we're, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. They know I'm joking. We love, you know, at least uh, Manny hasn't, he's been so busy. I don't care. I might be nice to him, but Taylor, she's awesome. Crutcher, you're awesome too. We're going to have you back a bunch. Um, yeah. And this is, this is super fun. Um, yeah, dude, we got it. We got to, uh, we got to do a recap once we kick off this, uh, this round two and uh, Crutcher, dude, I hope you continue to have success and keep kicking it. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Looking forward to uh, honestly just looking forward to giving away this stuff to one lucky, you know, or actually, dude, it's like it now. I don't know. I can't remember what the odds are, but like the odds of actually winning product, it's really good. And <laughs> yeah. then, um, you know, I, I mean, at very least, you know, if you buy, um, yeah, if you buy one spot, I mean, it's a lot better than winning a, odds of winning a lottery ticket. Oh, that's. I, I agree. So guys, make sure you check it out. And as always, continue to support. Crutcher, we'll talk soon, man. This was fun. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks.